Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we're recording music. Literally, we are recording music and a podcast at the same time. We hate each ourselves. We hate each other. I don't I don't hate you. Oh, I know. I love uh, you too. I, I mean, I hate you for having this idea. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, we are actively uh, laying down uh, music for the September track. And... We are in the process, which 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 will have come out by the time this podcast comes out. It's nothing else matters by Metallica, mm-hmm. which is the song of your heart. Yeah, that was the very first song that I started to learn on guitar. I mean, after lessons and whatnot, um, Metallica, Symphony Metallica, the album, uh, Enter Sandman, and Nothing Else Matters were what got me to pick the guitar back up. And Nothing Else Matters, especially because it's all finger picked open stuff in the beginning, was the first song that I tried learning, and I've basically been learning it for like 15 years, just like bits and pieces, refining it, getting it better. Now, listening back to the scratch track, clearly I haven't really improved that much, <laughs> but it's it's definitely uh, something that I've been working on, and so I thought yeah. it might be appropriate to do that. This is probably the most technically difficult song that we have done for, yeah. the, for the challenge. No, up until now, the technical difficulty came out of the actual production of bringing in a guitar, a second guitar, uh, guitar fills, bass guitar, yep. multiple audio or uh, vocals. But, uh, yeah, I am, I am here, I think today, mostly for audio production, video production, that kind of thing, because you're, you're playing and singing. Yeah. But it's exciting. Mm-hmm. I am, I am excited to, to play the song of your heart. I think we will, um, at some point play the song of my heart, which will be a good time. Mm-hmm. We kind of introduced the icebreaker early with uh, with nothing else matters being one of the first songs I learned. What's the, one of the first songs that you learned? Though? So the first song that I learned on guitar is the first song that everyone learns on guitar. It's Smoke on the water. No, oh, yeah, I thought you were gonna say Wonderwall. I was gonna be like, that's it. We can't be friends anymore. No, no, I actually don't remember how to play Wonderwall. I learned it once as a joke, <laughs> and then I played that joke on someone, and now I can't remember. Uh, which I think I'm I'm spending valuable cognitive resources on something else now. <laughs> but we are going to keep recording, and uh, we're, we're just going to sort of mix this together. So if you're listening to the audio version, um, I also recommend the video version, because it's kind of interesting. Bonus footage. Bonus. <laughs> so, Good? Yeah. Is that just inside your molars now? Uh, down a little bit. There you go. Also, we need violins. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee's gonna play the bass for, or like the, the, the upright bass for the, yeah. for next month's song. That is. So close, no matter how far. Couldn't be much more from the heart. Forever trust in who we are, and nothing else matters. Anyway, I am exhausted. <laughs> uh, we just played in the guitar, and uh, which includes the rhythm and the solo. Yeah. And yeah, you played from you played it from your heart. No music, no tabs, no nothing. Yeah, no, it's definitely it's not faithful to the original. But it is faithful to the original. Well, it, it is the essence of being faithful. Yeah, it's not. What it, it is not a copy. Yeah, it's not a note-for-note note rendition, but it, it catches all of the, the main movements of, of the solo. Which I will, is, I will yeah. say that this is the one thing that you and I will fight about constantly when it comes to covers, <laughs> is you're the guy who wants to make a copy of the original, and yeah. I'm the one who's like, no, let's take it and break it into pieces and put those pieces back together in a thing that is a love letter to the original. This is why your slow jams are so amazing to watch that I could never <laughs> I, I could never participate in because I don't have the the experience to be able to roll with it as well as you do. I don't know, you just relax and make it up as you go. So so what's the hardest part about recording these songs, especially um, because For you, me? Yeah. For today, not falling asleep. It's been a long ass day. <laughs> um like we've still got to do production yeah. and um, harmonies and, and that kind yeah. of stuff. My turn on the mic is coming up. Yeah, we got uh, what four spots I need to re-record because they they sound pretty bad. Yeah, it's not so it's not bad. I mean, no, we polish it out. We polish it out. Yeah, uh, but now the, the like in in general, 
Um, the hardest thing for me is stopping you from doing it over and over and over again. Like, we got our, our best solo take when I was like, alright, this is your last shot. Yeah. This is it. And then we're going to take the one we have and use that. Yeah. But... I'd say the hardest part for me, up until now, has been uh, I've been doing a lot of the vocals. Because when we first set out to do this, you made it very clear you did not want to sing every single song. I want to sing all the songs, yeah. but that isn't the point yeah. of this challenge. The point of the challenge is you want to develop your musical confidence, and yeah. part of that means I take a step back yeah. when it comes to that. Yeah, so the hardest part up until now has been being comfortable with singing. Being comfortable with, and with singing with Jim, I was reflecting on it today, actually, that playing it live oftentimes is not a problem. Like, when people sing at karaoke, it just sounds good when you're performing for people, but when you're locked in a room not performing for anybody but the person usually at the soundboard who's, like, going... <laughs> you know, there, are some, there are some faces yeah. on, the, uh, on the room cam. Yeah. There are some faces. So it's always a challenge to do that, but today, today it's been a, a real challenge because I'm struggling at the limit of my uh, guitar abilities. Like I could probably have practiced a little bit more. Everybody can practice a little bit more, but trying to play cleanly, like uh, not accidentally muting strings that you're trying to let ring clear. Uh, this song really relies on a lot of strings just ringing out to fill in the background. Yeah. And one thing that I kind of cringe at is there's a lot of really kind of blocky movements from note to note as sounds I'm changing. Fine. I know it sounds fine to him, but um, if if I certainly wouldn't be sending this to the guys from Metallica anytime soon to be like, hey, here's a love letter to the music that you've made that's meant so much to me. I think they would totally dig it. They'd I think they would, would actually be super cool about it and be yeah. like, and they would be like, hey, it's not as good as ours, but whatever, man. You yeah. do you. Yeah, I know. I like, know. So the, the thought and work that goes into it is a thing that they would recognize. Well, and it's probably this ties in with um, the grad school thing of, of it doesn't have to be good, just good enough. Like, there's, there's a point of diminishing returns of trying to polish it up. You should mm -hmm. just... It, it, this challenge throughout this year has all been uh, for me about learning how to accept, you know, like you have you have a an ideal version in your mind, and you have a version that comes out, and learning to to accept that there's nothing wrong with that. It's not bad. I will go one further. Yeah. I would say that the version that comes out is the right one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Not 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 the like as as someone who operates a guitar by banging on it until it makes sense, the sounds that I hear in my head. Um, what you what you get out of that is almost always the correct thing. Um, because when, you, when you're actually playing it, if it's wrong, you know that it's wrong. And you know, and that means you know what the correct thing is. As soon as you, you get that out, I mean, you can find, you can always find little pieces to, to make tweaks and changes, but mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, like, apart from the pit, the bits where you're like, oh, well, I would lift a finger here or put an extra finger here. Mm -hmm. It's, no, no, this is, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. This is the right thing for right now, which isn't to say that two years from now, if you do it again, you're not going to have a different right thing. Yeah. Like, we, we play Unconditional all the time. There's probably Kaylee and I's, like, signature song. I wrote that song four years ago. It is so different mm -hmm. between how I played it four years ago and how I play it now. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, it's been a learning process for me. I mean, you certainly had a lot more musical experience coming into it. Mm -hmm. Well, playing and recording experience, for sure. Should start getting you to play solos. Oh, God. I wanna. <laughs> I gotta play, do more Rocksmith. Yeah. But, I don't know. I play guitar well enough to sing along with it. That's my goal. Yep. You are certainly good at the rhythm guitar. <laughs> but yeah, so now, now we've got our tracks laid in. I've got to lay down some extra vocals. Mm -hmm. And then, we go to production. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Oh, you weren't recording anything anyways. No, 
it turns out I'm not. Wow, that's uh, lucky for us then. <laughs> this is Nerm for recording. All right. Give me one more. All right. So we did some preliminary production. It sounds pretty good. I think it sounds pretty good. Yeah, I mean, uh, even auto tuning notwithstanding, it doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> I love auto tuning people's tracks because it's hilarious. It makes you sound like a robot. Yeah. No. Well, remember? I don't remember which song it was. There was that time when you threw auto tune in there, and it changed almost nothing. Like it doesn't sound good when I sing, but at least it was consistent with where it was supposed to be within the scale. So. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, we're gonna, f I'm gonna finalize production in the next day or so, and send it over to you and we'll make any final tweaks. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, song, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but mostly it's just repetition mm -hmm. and, and like exhaustion. It's really interesting to think about, um, like, like, like in, in recording studios where you've got you know, pro mixers and whatnot, instead of my little tiny mixer and doing it all and, and cheating a ton with software. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at, at how many tiny little changes get made mm -hmm. just to, to, to make everything fit, to make everything sound right, how many things get brought in uh, to try them out. And more importantly, how many things get left out. Mm -hmm. We've been at this now for, what, five, six hours? Four hours? Uh, I got here a little after two, so yeah. four hours. And and we've still got probably, I've still got probably another two hours of work ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And that's, and this is for like a, a challenge cover song. Like mm -hmm. this isn't even, like, like if this was an album quality song, I'd have another six hours of work ahead of me yeah. at least. Well, it would take, and, and we'd have another six hours of recording. Yeah, several several days of recording. Because the other thing too is we're only doing today two guitar parts, two vocal parts, yeah. no bass, and no drums. I would yeah. like to get a drum in at some point in this challenge, but it's really difficult to coordinate because neither of us are drummers. It's true. So, um, yeah, I know it take it. There, there's definitely a lot of work. Like you, you just don't even realize how many times you record, re-record. You know, you start doing something, then you get distracted, or one single note is out, and you're like, nope, nope, stop, start again. Yeah. And it's it, it can become super or frustrating. Or you get it, you get it dead on, but you don't commit hard enough. Yeah. And you're like, I can do better. Mm -hmm. There's there's also that um, interesting quality that uh, I talked about it earlier. The like. When you do it live, for some reason, all the parts come together. Now, granted, this is after they've written the song, they've recorded the song, they've practiced the song. They know exactly, if there's multiple tracks, what they're going to do live. Like, what mm -hmm. that finished live sound is going to be. Um, but you, you, other than if they're, say, not professionals or they're not on their game, like, when you go in and you just sing a five to six minute long song in one take live... You know, it's, it usually sounds good. Just the amount of time and repetition, as you said, just going into it. It's it's so weird. It's such a, a foreign Well, I mean, I mean, when you're in the studio, you're creating the way it's supposed to sound. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you get when you get out to live and you want it to, you know, you put it in your mixer, you know how it's supposed to sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you practiced it a ton. Like, I, I would wager, like, I don't typically play a song live unless I've played it. 40 to 100 times. Yeah. Um, and I don't make music for a living. I imagine that if I did make music for a living, it would be more like 200. Yeah. 
and and at that point, like you're you don't have to think about where your hands are. You don't have to think about. Um, and not only that, but you have people who aren't you mm -hmm. running your your sound from all of your instruments, and mm -hmm. their and and it's their job to make it sound great, and yeah. they are good at their jobs. <laughs> we are very do it yourself in the, in the studio. <laughs> yeah. We we've done we've done shows with a sound person before and they sounded great. Yeah, um, uh, it's that, always wonderful. Did you have a sound person when you recorded the the live album for no. Woodsuit? No, no, that was just in your I, laptop. I was the sound person. That was just my laptop. We <laughs> weren't even sure those were going to come out. Uh, it did. Um, it sounded really good. But we had one at Battle of the Bards, for instance, mm -hmm. and it, it, we sounded great. Mm -hmm. um, like and it's just that it's that extra level of concentration because you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of bands they use guitar. They have guitar techs, mm -hmm. so they don't even have to think about did I tune my guitar? Yeah, is my guitar like in working order? Is it is it clean or is it an embarrassment? Yeah, is it acclimated to the humidity and temperature of the venue? Yeah, so there's there's a ton of things there. Like there's a ton of moving parts in that, mm -hmm. and it's neat to get a look at at some of them. I think also it's a process of self-forgiveness where you're like, okay, I could do this better on my best day, but I have given this everything I have. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand sort of where that stops. Because mm -hmm. you also don't want to produce something that you're not proud of. No. No, I can't say that in this in the challenge that we've ever done something that I am not happy that we shipped. Mm -hmm. There's parts, there's parts of the songs where I'm like, ah, I could have did that better. Oh, if I had more time. Like today, there was a constraint on time. If we had more time, we could do more, like add a bass track or something. Mm -hmm. Well, if you had the bandwidth, because you've been up since seven, so yeah. it's a little different there. But um, yeah, no, I mean, there's. I think the song that I'm most proud of up until now is is probably um, Everlong. Yeah, everyone turned out really well. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna like. I'm, and that's not a lead into the thing that I'm the least proud of, other than maybe Wagon Wheel because because vocally it was the very start of the process where you're trying to coach me into a better performance. But that's not anything to do with like what you and Kaylee did. No, there's definitely production stuff that I I know now that I didn't know then. Like giving me like an in-ear monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but there 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 were ways I could have produced that better, mm -hmm. and had it had it come out like there were some recording kerfuffles on the technical side mm -hmm. that we have not since reproduced because I have learned from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this all started with me watching guys like uh, Leo. Uh, I can't remember his last name, but the the Frog Leap Studios guy yeah. and uh, Jonathan Young. You know, seeing them produce a song a week. Now, it's a song a week, and then they're making money off of it, so they have a very good incentive to spend a lot of time in perfecting the quality. But you know, starting with man, I wish I could do that to where we are now. Mm -hmm. It's it's been a it's been an interesting process. Yep, I'm very well, happy with what we're, what we're doing. Still got three more. Still got three more to go. But for now, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. We're signing off. Stay musical. Stay awesome. We also forgot. Maybe I should append it into the to the post bit. By the way, if you want to see us anywhere on the social medias, you can go to mm -hmm. RyanHuckle.com or at RJ Huckle on Twitter or uh, I guess Ryan Huckle on Instagram. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, JimTickwell.com or uh, Concept Crucible on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, we also stream at twitch.tv slash Riot. Mm -hmm. We make all kinds of fun stuff that you can see at wuzuriot.com. And don't forget, you can also check us out on Patreon. Everything linked in the doobly-doo down below. Bye. Stay awesome. I apologize for what's maybe about to happen to your ears. Okay.